Welcome everyone uh, who's joining. Sorry, we're slightly late. Uh, we were just having some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll give it a few a few seconds just to let everyone arrive. Okay, so I think uh, everyone is here and um, I think we can make a start. So welcome everyone to the ZPNC stream. Uh, this session is um, going to be presented by Danilo Gipani from EPV Technologies. It will be on measuring cryptographic activities in ZOS. Um, as with all the sessions, we would really appreciate any feedback um, if you can leave it at the end. This session is 6AY, and I'll leave a link in the chat box so you can uh, leave any feedback. And also, we'd really appreciate if you could uh, donate to our nominated charities for your chance to uh, enter the raffle as well. Uh, in terms of questions and answers, please feel free to uh, leave them in the chat box, and Danilo will be more than happy to answer them uh, towards the end of the presentation. And uh, without further ado, uh, over to you, Danilo. Okay. So uh, let's say that this was a recorded session, but we had troubles this morning. So at the end, I'm going to do it live. Uh, unfortunately, this is a session. I last time, the last time I did it, it was in March uh, and it was part of the APV University. So this was a chapter, a specific chapter of what we call the APV University, which is a uh, kind of education that we do in EPV for our customers. And uh, you should see my screen. Now I have to find a way to go forward because <laughs> this is part, okay. So I'm doing the presentation like this. So you are just going to see all the screen with the sidebar be again, because uh, the problem was that it was recorded and it was uh, going forward uh, one one one, but now I'm going to do it live. So uh, I I need to handle my laptop by hand. Okay, the first uh, the first part is about crypto. And uh, sorry, this was the crypto. Um, the, the crypto chapter of the APV University. So it was the chapter dedicated to crypto activities. And this is the agenda of the presentation we are going to see. So I will make an introduction. Then uh, we will talk about CPACF, crypto cards, and then the available measure in record 72, in record 30, and in record 82, uh, subtype 31. Okay, as an introduction, uh, what are the primary function of uh, cryptography? So you need to identify and make sure that uh, the user uh, are exactly who they claim to be. So you must be sure that they are exactly the people you want to access the data. Uh, also, you need to control who can access what. So this is an old uh, activity on the mainframe. It's years and years that we, with RACF, with System 2000, with tools, we control what happens. Now the problem is more complex because uh, uh, you are sharing the access with other uh, platforms and with other customers sometimes. So you must be sure exactly who is doing what. Then another part of uh, this activity is the data confidentiality. So you want to make sure that only those that uh, are the intended receiver of the data, only them can read it. And data integrity, make sure that they receive the data as it was in the source and it's not tampered in any way. Then security management. Uh, 
And uh, finally, no repudiation uh, to make sure that uh, once the intended receiver read the data, you get a message and you are sure that uh, he did it. It's a proof that he did it. Now, the Integrated Cryptographic Service Facility, ICSF, is a standard component of, of the OS. And it works with uh, hardware cryptographic uh, features and the RACF that I mentioned before to provide uh, secure high speed uh, cryptographic services. It provides also APIs that uh, you can use to uh, share these uh, cryptographic services with a customer application. There are two different uh, cryptographic hardware service device type available on Z13, uh, 14, and 15. And one is uh, what is called CPACF, and that is exploiting the copper the coprocessor associated to each core. So it's uh, very, very fast. And the other one is the PCI crypto cards. Now this schema is, uh, uh, let's say is telling you what are the characteristics of this, uh, okay, good, of these uh, hardwares. So when we talk ab about uh, CPACF, the security is considered medium, whereas it's considered very high with PCI cards. Uh, the CPU usage, so CPU consumption is uh, higher with CPACF because you are using uh, a coprocessor and it's in comparison very low when you use the cards. And of course, the because of uh, the fact that you are using the coprocessor, the performance is very high with CPACF and it's lower with the uh, crypto cards. Okay, a few words about the CPACF. It is associated with the general purpose engine of the machine and uh, provides already the uh, assembler instruction that perform the crypto operation. These are synchronous and run at the processor speed uh, for every kind of CPU, so the general purpose the, and the special engines. So as a consequence, when the CPACF is processing a cryptographic request, uh, what happens is that uh, the general, let's say that you start from a general processor, you uh, request a CPACF activity, and while you are waiting for the answer, the processor is not available to any other work. So it's there and it's spinning. Okay. The performance are by definition very good because all the processing is done in the same chip. Uh, it may use a, clear keys or also protected keys, but in terms of definition, it is not considered a secure key device. Uh, and uh, also only some of the uh, cryptographic function can be executed on a CPACF. As usual, the record 113, which we always suggest to turn on nowadays, it makes uh, no sense not to turn it on on every helper. So the record 113 include a set of counters that allow you to analyze the performance of uh, the, some of the cryptographic function performed by the CPACF. Here is a list of the supported function. They are, uh, you may read them, pseudo random number generation, Secure hash algorithm, which is uh, also uh, include the, the one, second, and third uh, different uh, secure hash algorithm. Then data encryption algorithm, uh, advanced encryption standard, and uh, on the Z starting from the Z15 engines hardware, 
also the elliptic curve cryptographic. And again, on the record 113, you have information about uh, which uh, services you are using, which function. The information that you have available are the number of function executed. So the number of time that every single function is executed in the interval, uh, the number of uh, CP cycles spent uh, while waiting for uh, uh, the answer. So from the, let's say the response time of this uh, activity, uh, it's also used to calculate how many CP cycles you are spending. Then you have as an information, the number of functions that are issued and blocked because the coprocessor was busy performing a function requested by another CP. The number of CP cycles spent spinning while waiting for the coprocessor that is blocked uh, because there is the request from another CP. Okay, here you see a list of the counters and what's in there. So you see the counter 64 of the record 113 and the information that is contained within that counter. As usual, we try to do as many real life example as we can and uh, in in this uh, very simple graph, uh, we just uh, uh, are representing the crypto request by function. So how many each function, how many times has been called and executed. And this allows you to have a hourly profile at a, every customer site. Yeah. Similarly, this is uh, instead uh, representing the CP cycle uh, by crypto function. So you have uh, different colors. So th there is in this example, the, the first uh, SHA uh, cycles are by far the bigger consumer, the one that is using the most, and the other are very small. But then again, this is just a graph. So you have the values behind. And uh, in this example here, we include both the cycles and the blocked cycles. So those that you were there waiting to get the final service produced and you couldn't. So we told before this counters show the cycle used by the all the type of engines, so the general purpose or ZIP and IFL, while, uh, spinning while uh, waiting for the function to be performed. Uh, you can use these uh, values to make an estimation of the amount of MIPS used for the crypto activities on CPACF using the formula that is represented in the uh, slide. And by the way, all the slides are available on the GSC UK site. So this is the simple formula that you have to use. The total use cycle is provided by the basic counter B0, again in record SMF 113. And the MIPS use can be calculated as uh, we discussed in a different chapter of the EPV Performance University at the time. Let's say that uh, there are many ways, of course, to estimate the MIPS used by a machine. So what you have to do is, first of all, try and have a figure of how many MIPS is uh, every single uh, general purpose engine producing, and then you can use that as a start. If you have uh, any question on this uh, or need more information, then you can drop me a question and I can go in further detail afterwards. Okay, in the example we saw before, 80 MIPS were used in the peak hour. Uh, 
including both CPU and ZIP. So again, this is an estimation and this has nothing to do with the MSUs. So with the money that you are supposed to pay at the end of the month, it's just a, an estimation of the amount of uh, activity performed doing uh, crypto services. Okay, in the figure, I don't remember if it's, yeah, the figure we saw before, the total MIPS usage, uh, so both uh, general purpose and uh, zip in this case was about 12,000. And in that situation, uh, the CPU utilization because of cryptographic graphic services was lower than 1%. And this data was coming from a bank. Okay, a few words about the crypto cards. Uh, crypto cards are optional. So they may be there and they may not be there. Uh, the advantage that they uh, provide are in terms of uh, availability, scalability, and cost. Uh, differently than what we saw before, the execution of the service on cryptographic uh, card uh, are asynchronous. So and the request CP is not spinning. So in other words, uh, you, your program will ask for the service and then we'll do something else, uh, servicing other jobs or other tasks on the system. Meanwhile, the service will be executed on the card. Because of this, the performance is not as good uh, because you need also some input out of operation to the PCI crypto cards. But in comparison with what uh, we saw before, uh, the PCI crypto cards are considered secure key device uh, because they have tamper resistant technology on the cards. So in other words, uh, if it's working, it means that it has not been tampered, which uh, could not be the case with the CPACF that we saw before. Again, this is just a formal definition. Uh, they are all very secure, but by definition, this is much more secure than the other. So when you have a PCI crypto card adapter, you may configure it in three different ways. Uh, the very common ways are to use it as a coprocessor, co and it's the default, as an accelerator, uh, and if you configure your card as an accelerator, uh, the card will support only three uh, cryptographic APIs. And the third part is something that we haven't yet seen anywhere around, uh, but I bet in the future, uh, this is going to happen someplace and is to define it as a uh, PKCS11. Uh, and you see the definition. In this mode, the card only supports APA associated with uh, PKCS11 and is used uh, basically to uh, make sure that your SMF data is secured. So if you are sending your SMF data around in the world, then uh, this will provide security and cryptographic services. So only the intended user, final user, will be able to read it. Crypto card measurements are provided by RMF, uh, both at the LPAR and the CAC level. So you have information in record 70 subtype 2, and you have separate section uh, that provide information about uh, your cards, depending on the way they are configured. So if they are configured as, as uh, coprocessor or accelerators, they will provide different information. <coughs> the 
the results section containing measurement data of uh, selected ICSF uh, activities, but this is provided only at the helper level. So what you can do with this uh, kind of information, you uh, may understand uh, the utilization, the execution time, and the function served by type. So you have some information on how you are using your PCI cards. This is a list of the uh, matrix available at the coprocessor level. So you see the name of the field and the label that tells you what is supposed to be in the field. You may find this information in your SMF manual, RMF manual. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a problem with my voice. I was not supposed to speak today and I have no water <laughs> close by, but this is fine, I will survive. Okay, you have this uh, information available and you can use the fields uh, mentioned in the formula at the end of the page to calculate the utilization of every uh, coprocessor. And now uh, another example. So we have in this situation, uh, this is information from a customer uh, that we call customer one. We have an uh, uh, example for others. And uh, just to see how differently you may use these uh, devices. Okay, so you have two crypto coprocessor, uh, the zero and the one, and you see the usage uh, of these uh, cards. In this example, they use a different group of system and you may see that the load is completely different. So uh, everyone is uh, related to the activity that is coming from this system. This is another example instead, customer two. And in this uh, example, they have five different coprocessor, but they are uh, uh, all, on the same system and in fact the load is very balanced and uh, it's understandable let's say so again the different example the one we saw before it was serving different helpers and i just go back one slide just to tell you i'm not sure this was a, a an outsourcer provider but the outsourcer provider could be a very good example Let's say that they um, have different customers and uh, the load of every processor will, uh, of every coprocessor, sorry, or PCI card will depend on the uh, way the different application of the different customer will call the services. Instead, this is a bank, they are all on the same system and the uh, load is uh, perfectly balanced. To calculate the average execution time per operation, you can use this formula. Again, it's using the fields that we saw previously. And you can then graph the results in a plot in this example. And we, here we see the performance is uh, similar of the different cards. And uh, this happens even though the load is quite different. So, but again, this is a different kind of information. And this is the second, the one with the, uh, the second customer, the one with the load very balanced. And you see that the lines overlap each other so that they look like a single line. Instead, they are five lines. Okay, here is a list of, again of uh, uh, the fields available for coprocessors. And again, you have the name of the field and the label. 
that uh, tells you what is supposed to be within that field. And then again, if you are interested in understanding what uh, services are executed, you may use this information. And here are the formulas that you may use to uh, calculate uh, the utilization or the execution time per operation. Okay. I don't think there is uh, much to discuss about the formula. Let's say that if you want to do the exercise, you may go backward and see exactly what is the meaning of every single field. So you have the list of the fields and you use them in order to calculate, again, the usage and the execution time. Again, my comment here is that I leave the formula to you. The formula will be on the slides. If then you have any question afterwards, you may contact us directly without troubles. Okay. Similarly, this is the information available for the accelerators. And these are the formulas. And uh, there is just a note at the end of the page that execution time across multiple engines must be summed for uh, the different key operation for the 1024 key operation and for the 2048 key operation. So the uh, crypto hardware activity report provides performance measurement about the following activities. And ciphering and the ciphering data by using uh, data encryption standards and the advanced decryption standard. And generating and verify message authentication codes and using secure hash algorithms. Again, in the slide, there is a description of uh, what these services are supposed to be and meant. And you know uh, performance and measurements about every single different service. Then you have information about uh, the personal identification number. And this is uh, what is normally called the PIN that you use in many activities with your uh, cards. And uh, anyway, it's uh, something familiar. So this is the basis to verify the identity of a customer in the financial industry network. And then again, you have information about digital signature generation and verification and formal preservative encryption. And then again, you can plot this information. So you can use it to produce uh, reports similar to the one showed here. This again is uh, uh, data from the customer one. And it tells you how, uh, what kind of services are used, are called and used in, uh, when you call uh, your cards, your crypto cards. And you see the customer two is a complete different usage. So it's a different application and they use these cards for a different kind of activity. Then again, from the perspective of the presentation, the information is you can use this data to understand exactly what your application are doing and to measure if this thing is changing over time or is changing when you introduce new application. Okay, this is a, an help from uh, uh, our product and it tells you just, uh, let's say the, the name of the field that we have available, the description and how it is uh, calculated. Okay, what we have available in record 72. 
So record 70 is about the system activity. And 72 generally is about the uh, workloads running on your system. And here we have information uh, about uh, crypto using and delay states for uh, the service and report class level. So this is the record and the fields that are produced in uh, SMF by RMF. Now, the manuals are not always uh, very self-explanatory, so it took us some time to find out that AP acronym, uh, when they talk about APU and APD, it literally means agent processor. That is uh, the term used by this field when they talk about crypt cryptographic cards. So these are the variables that provide the sample when work units are using or queuing into a crypto card. Instead, the field that is called FQD, uh, FQD, sorry, is a processor feature queue associated with a CPU. So this is an old description and it is the work waiting for a CPACF processor. Okay, this is example taken from RMF. And uh, just to tell you that uh, you may use uh, this formula to calculate that kind of information. So we, when you use those, those uh, sums and use this formula starting from your SMF data, and then you want to make sure that you are doing the right thing, you may compare that with RMF. And these are the values that you will find. Okay, now we are talking about SMF report theory. So the address space activity. And also here, uh, there is a small piece of information about cryptographic activities. Uh, the, the record theory contains a field that is called SMF theory CSC, and it provides an indication of the number of cryptographic, cryptographic instruction that are executed through uh, ICSF, but every single other space. And this can be used to identify the application that is using the services. Let's say that uh, in uh, our test and in our numbers, uh, it looks like uh, when you make the sum at the end, the Cryptographic instruction is accounted twice. Uh, then again, this is uh, what we what we saw. So the point is, uh, when I mean it's uh, accounted twice, is that the same information you have both at the uh, ICF address space level which is in this example is the address space called CSF. And then you have every single address space, uh, how much it is using. So you have it reported both at the address space that is performing the activity and at the address space that is requesting the activity. Okay, there is a final section on this uh, presentation and it's talking about SMF record 82 subtype 31. This is very specific for what's happening uh, at the, uh, uh, in your uh, services and uh, PCI cards. Now, it's many years that uh, this information is there. Again, it's very specific and uh, not many people use it. Uh, is uh, it can be used to get some uh, statistic, but there are no performance information. So you may know, again, how you are using your cryptographic resources, but there are no uh, performance information. 
Okay, first of all, you have to make sure that you are uh, available this announcement. And uh, you may do that issuing on the console, the display ICF OPT command, and you will get the information. You may turn on uh, uh, the setting the stats and stats filters parameter, the member CSF PRM of your uh, farm library. When you turn it on, you will have uh, this kind of information available that then you must handle by hand. So there are the, I am aware no tool specific that will do it for you. And uh, you will have uh, anyway information and statistic about uh, ENG. So usage tracking of cryptographic engines, services, and algorithms. And using the parameter stats filters, you can filter the criteria that is used to aggregate uh, this, uh, the information available when the stats are enabled. And uh, the usage you, has, you have available is tracked by every single unique user and job identifier. And the user identifier consists of an address space user read and the task level uh, user it. Instead for applications such as uh, Kix or IMS uh, that generate a unique task level user ID for every single transaction, you may understand that you will have a, a lot of information if you turn it on. There is a way to avoid this kind of problem and is uh, using the option uh, stats filter not k user id uh, and so the record written when you use this kind of option is much lower this field is written uh, the record interval and uh, or eventually when there is a let's say is written for every combination of the following fields. So you have the job name, the job ID, uh, that is the JS number, the RACF user, uh, the task level user ID, if it is there, and uh, eventually a name of the secondary address space that was the color of the service. And uh, let's say the next slides are going to be uh, very detailed about the information that is available on this field. And then you, you have to, let's say, read it specifically to understand at the beginning you have the user, then you have the job ID, the job name, and uh, then you have information provided in tags. So the section of this record is always you have a start where you have the user, job ID, the job name, and then specific tags. And then you go to the next user, job ID, job name, and its own specific tags. So this is the information that you can uh, read in here. So you have the crypto card ID, regional cryptographic service ID, and uh, usage counters. So we try to show here an example. So you have the hexadecimal value 0201, which is uh, the one highlighted with the uh, green frame. And this value means that a crypto card has been used. And then the, uh, the crypto card, uh, address is 5C01 and its serial number is DV and all of zero. So this is what you read uh, 
not in hexadecimal. So this is written uh, in human readable format. And then you have the usage count in the red box, which is again in hexadecimal, it's the value three. So it looks complex. If you need to do it, it's not that complex, but of course you have to put your mind into it. Uh, so using those fields, you may estimate, evaluate, sorry, uh, the work that has been performed by every single ICSF service. And this is a real example. So you have the tag name, and the counter, then the tag name and the counter, tag name and the counter, and so on. In the example of uh, the previous uh, page, uh, we had uh, six different ICSF service being invoked. And this is the list of the services that were invoked and the number of times that they were invoked. And then this is uh, uh, another example and you see the algorithm that has been used. So again, you have to take the name and the counter tag name and counter for the section uh, of the algorithm. And in the example of the previous page, we had three different algorithms being used and, uh, and the values. So what are the major issues with this uh, kind of uh, SMF record? So the record 82 sub 31. We know how much work has been performed by each uh, service, but we have no uh, performance metrics available. So we just have a counter. So we know how much uh, they were invoked and used, but that's all. And that was the last slide of my presentation. I'm sorry if it's been uh, not very, uh, accurate in some parts again i was uh, i did prepare this paper in march when we did for the university and then everything was recorded and today i had to do it live and uh, again i know the information but i wasn't prepared to do it live so maybe i've been a little bit confusing some of the parts but anyway you uh, if you have any question you may ask us uh, the information. Then one thing I was meant to say here was about the fact that uh, next year again in springtime we will have the PPD Performance University. So if you were interested in some information, you could find them on our website. But if you go on our website right now, you will find uh, information about a conference that we will do in this month in two weeks time, which is called uh, System Z update, where we will have uh, all the new features available with the ZOS versions and other stuff. So if you are interested, again, you may go to our website, see the agenda, and eventually drop me a note if you would like to participate. Okay, are there any questions? Um, just having a look at the chat box now. Don't have, don't see any questions. Uh, just a reminder to everyone: if you want to ask a question, just uh, feel free to uh, type away in the chat box, or um, I can also bring you up on stage and unmute you so you can ask in person. Um, we can just give you a few few seconds just to see if anything comes through. I will remind again that uh, the paper is available for everybody, so you may download it from the GSC UK site. And let's say that there are two slides at the end. That is it. You are supposed to drop a feedback. I hope you enjoy the presentation and, uh, 
and then again, this is some uh, publicity for the GSC UK, which is a very interesting uh, community and provides always very interesting conferences and discussions. Yeah, thanks, uh, Danilo. I don't see any questions coming out at the moment, but if anyone wants to follow up with you separately, um, yeah. I, think, I think you've got your email. Um, so they can, yeah. they can ask you in private or reach out to you that way. But um, yeah, really appreciate your presentation, Danilo, despite the technical challenge we had at the beginning. Thanks for presenting it live. Um, also, thanks to everyone that tuned into this session. Uh, please do leave session feedback, like I mentioned at the beginning. We'd really appreciate it. I've put a link in the chat box, and obviously we'd, we'd appreciate any uh, donation, big or small, to our nominated charities um and that will also give you a chance to take part in the prize raffle as well so um yeah thanks very much everyone um i think we can we can close it there then if that's okay danilo okay thank you thanks everyone take care i hope you enjoyed the presentation <laughs> yeah very informative thank you okay thank you bye